all of you here. Yeah. All right. Welcome to number 14. Numero 14. We missed you yesterday. Sorry. Hey, apologize, folks. Some, you know, snowstorms warrant a lot of what I call white gold. So I had to take advantage of the time. I was, uh, I was about, let's see. Yeah, man. I was about, uh, 20 something hours straight in a truck. So North Jersey got a lot more snow than we did. That's for sure. Were you doing the plowing? <sighs> you brutal. What are you going to do? The, 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 when it's, I like those, those are the type of storms you like though, because you get a lot real fast. And obviously with plowing, once it's, you know, once it, you move it, you're done, you know? So, um, the storms that are a pain are really the ones that are kind of slow moving and it just drop a little bit at a time because, you know, you have to be out there constantly until it stops. Right. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a gig where it's it's a it's a state contract, so it's a major highway. Um, so you really got to take care of it. And uh, it being the first storm, you know, the the state's really kind of on you to make sure you're doing exactly what you're doing. So it's kind of overkill. You know what I mean? I mean, I was called in uh, yesterday. No, so when was the storm? Tuesday. Today's what Friday. So it was Wednesday. So I was in from about um, when at 10, uh, 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. And I got done yesterday. Um, probably they released us around one thirty-two o'clock. So, a lot wow. of time in a, a lot of time in a truck, but Very nice cool. way to, to to process some things. Yeah, man, I'm a jack of all trades. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, I have the ability. I have the ability to push down and up and 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 drive a car. It's really not that difficult, guys. If you really, really want to get into it, but I guess I forgot my hat today, so I have to. I'm telling you, I will be. I, I you do look good, salt and pepper, bro. Well, I mean, you can pull it off. Some people don't look very good, but good is relative. Maybe it's just because so, you've you've been a stud your whole life, so it just kind of keeps going with it. I don't know about that. I started today a uh, a uh, I have a health coach that's um, wow. I started so, so, you're, so you're telling me that like it's time you need, you need to join me and I was just gonna say so, uh, so, you're, so you're telling me it's time because you know if you and I start competing, oh boy, I you might need to a solid thirty four waist for this guy. Well, well, if you're interested, I'll connect you uh, with my my health coach and the whole program I'm on and uh, the food they give you and everything. Oh you know? my! You're all in. You are all in. I'm all in. Oh, I gotta do in. this. This is I gotta do this. I I have this. Oh damn! It's bad timing. Right. The fact that I don't feel that good, but. Oh, so I really got to do this. Oh, I guess it's time. All right, Coach Schumann, here we go. New, you know, new year, new, <laughs> new, year, new year, new us. Um, yeah, maybe that might be it. What do you mean, you're eating the right food? You're gonna start? Do you got a health coach? Like, well, I, have, oh, I, have a spiritual coach. I have a spiritual coach. I have a health coach. I thought I was your spiritual I, coach. I have a financial. Uh, I have a financial coach now. Why? So I can continue to improve in that area. Look I'm at trying. you, better. In your, I, look at you. I don't even I'm know what you do. Coach. I guess I'm gonna have to get a love coach. And uh, what am I gonna? Oh my goodness, coach! This is this is you don't even know, and you're dropping this on on a Friday to me. You're going to have to leave me all weekend. I'm going to have to make all these. <sighs> Pretty soon this face is going to look nice and skinny. I officially weighed, I, I weighed in at 291.9 on my first official weigh-in. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. 291. I honestly think right now I am somewhere around 270, 270-something. So my at least you're taller, my friend. I carry it way different, and you still have muscles. I ain't got nothing. Yeah, well, we'll listen, dude. Happens. You were a linebacker. I was a safety. You still could pseudo look like a linebacker. This guy, I don't think I look like a safety anymore. Right, right now I'm a right guard for Montclair. Is that necessary? Why? Why does the Montclair have to get thrown in there? 
Because of Montclair, because be, you're right guard. Because you'd be one of the most because you'd be one of the most dominant linemen at an amazing school. I see how it is. Yeah. Guys, starting off the show, what uh uh oh our boy Pete Conley's on. He goes 291. No way, Pete, no way you're 235, bro. No. Oh, he must have lost weight. I guess. Post that, post that shit, Coach. Post it. Po- I, I, that needs to be known on the podcast that Pete tells us he's 235. No yeah. way, Pete. I see you going all out to all these meals and stuff like that. No way, dude. He can't be 235. Yeah, maybe That's 235 crazy. if he's wearing a bunch of his Game Changer helmets. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Yeah. But that that has to be what it is. I got I I can't get on my Facebook on my. On what this. did um What did what position did Pete play in college? He was a uh, tailback. He was a running back. He was like two twenty, tailback. He was pretty good. I mean, he could run. When he went to UConn. He, when he went to UConn, he's got to be good. He was good. He was good. What was he, his What were his other options? I mean. <laughs> Quinnipiac doesn't have football. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I think Clemson is, offered him a walk on too. Is Pete and um, is Pete and I should be asking him because he's sitting right here in the chat. Is Pete a Connecticut guy? Yeah, he said fullback two twenty in college. Oh, yeah, that's right. He ended as a fullback. That's right. You all ended as a fullback, which is a you know. Oh, no, I don't he was a tailback. He was a tailback. Uh, well, that's right. We talked about it. You I said was he was fullback. very good. You was said he was fullback. very good coming out of college. Out of and, then, and then when the new coach came and I moved over to linebacker, I guess he moved to fullback. I can't remember that. But yeah, he's playing. Uh, he, he's put URI. He said Dayton. I don't know what that means. Dayton. Does that mean he? Had, those were his offers, or those were games he had a good game against? I remember who we walked for. Bye. Um. So. Uh, uh, this week at this weekend's college football, what do we got? Championship weekend, man. Is is this is Ohio State playing Northwestern? Do we want to start with the negatives or the positives? The po- negatives because or of, positives of what? Because of Montana. Because the first negative is that Coastal Carolina, <laughs> unfortunately, is down with COVID and won't be able to play their championship game against the Raging Cajuns. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so that that's an unfortunate thing for them, um, obviously, especially with the season going on. But then, then again, after watching that that uh, that game where they beat BYU, BYU uh, social distancing wasn't really something that they looked like they were too concerned with. Um, well, maybe so, we yeah, and unfortunately, so hopefully something can be in the works for you know I don't know to some way play that game or get them another another game. Um, I would think they would be in some type of bowl game. Uh, but at the same time, I'm sure they would have loved to get that conference championship and get that uh, get that little chip under their, uh, you know, onto the banners at their school. I'm not feeling that great myself, to be honest. So, but you still uh, look great. Yeah, right. I, I look. You look like a million to, bucks. I I look look good next to like uh, a 90 year old man. That's uh, so. Was, but I, I as soon as I could get the kick. Kick this, whatever this is, and then be in good shape. But um, um, got a game tonight. Game I'm excited to see. Game that really wasn't supposed to. Uh, Pac-12 championship was supposed to happen, but with some different teams. So tonight you have uh, Pac-12 championship. You have um, USC Oregon. That's gonna be a great game. Which um, and you have Oregon as the three and a half point underdog. So, yeah, um, and this happens every time because I, you know, I love Oregon and I, you know, they get into the BCS. Um, no, because I mean, neither of them are really in the. I mean, obviously, if you're gonna win your, if you're gonna win your, um. If you win your conference championship, I'm sure there's something <laughs> I'm sure there's there's something in there for you. I'm sure you'll move up in rankings or whatever, but at the same time, I don't think any of them are really playing for a uh playing for anything crazy. Um 
other than other than the win uh, to win the Pac-12. Um, it's not like a uh, you know it's not like Alabama Florida this weekend uh, for the SEC championship where if Florida wins you know kind of gives them something a leg up or at least something else to talk for the committee to talk about to try and get them into the Final Four. Now that being said, head coach Dan Mullen um, was asked that question the other day in a press conference, and he said, uh, "In quote, um, oh, we'll, we'll worry about the Final Four after we win this weekend." So. Uh, pretty bold statement by Dan Mullen. Uh, he seems like that type of guy, an in-your-face type of guy that kind of, you know, he, he I, I think he he likes the bulletin board material stuff, um, but I think he's got to realize that he's going against Nick Saban. Uh, so we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. What, what other what other conference will we have on tap? Uh, everything. Every and this weekend is is your conference championship That's weekend. Insane. You have uh, you have Ohio State. Um, against uh, Northwestern, Northwestern uh, which should be a good one. Um, you have A and M, Texas A and M, kind of just sitting there in the weeds. Um, I know Iowa State has moved up to number six, uh, so 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 there's something to have a conversation about. Um, I know we always talk about the, the the final four in those games, but you got there, there's also those New Year's Day games, you know, with those guys that are just out of it. Um, so. Look, I'm looking forward to seeing Florida play Alabama, two high-powered offenses. I want to see how Florida bounces back after the uh, after that embarrassing loss to LSU. Uh, but I'm also extremely, extremely intrigued to see round two of Notre Dame-Clemson. Interesting. Mm. Uh, you have uh, so so like I said, Oregon USC. Uh, Oregon is the underdog; they're a, a three and a half point underdog. Uh, the Ohio State Northwestern game. Uh, Ohio State is favored by nineteen over Northwestern. That's a pretty big spread for a conference championship game. You, do you agree? Yeah, that's really that's that's a big, big, big. Uh, the other one that I really like, and I already and I already mentioned them here, is uh, Iowa State uh, underdog playing Oklahoma. Um, Oklahoma is favored by five and a half. Oklahoma State's playing Oklahoma. Oklahoma playing Oklahoma State, right? Oklahoma's playing Iowa State. I'll be right back. I'm going to the post office. How much are stamps, Nicole? Um, I got a bag of 20 for $11. Oh, did you get any cute little pictures on them? Some people collect those things. Oh, yes, I did. She's the best. Did you tell her what the what medicine I told her to get you? No. What medicine? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, punch in the chat. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. <laughs> I told you, I'll take I'll take Nicole in a fight any day. I'll, I'll take her on my side. Go to the hospital, you know. If we're pulling an Outsiders yeah, here or a uh, what's that other movie with the Jets? What's that called? Um, you know what I'm talking about. Wait, say that again. I missed it. It's the movie where the uh, the two sides meet, and it's uh, the the one side they're called the Jets. I feel oh, like it's got a Maria like in it. Yeah, Outside. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm taking Nicole to fight it, though. She's not a Soch. She's the a sharks. greaser. The Sharks and the Jets? So, the sharks, so who wins in a fight? The sh It's the Sharks and the Jets, right? Who are the good guys? Who are the bad guys? Well, well, they're not They're they're not good nor bad. Uh, they're well, it, was, bad. It, was a, it was a race thing, right? Um, well, it was neighborhoods. So it was, oh. uh, the one gang I think was, um, I want to say a Puerto Rican gang. And then the other gang was, um, what were the Jets? So who was it? it was the Jets and who? I want to say the Sharks. What was the other one? The other one was Polish gang. I can't remember now. So here's my question. If you're relating it to the outsiders, who are the Soches and who are the Greasers? 
I, 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 no, they're not. Well, it doesn't line up all, like all that. Right, all, right, all right. So the Jets were white kids and the Sharks were Puerto Ricans. So the Jets were more like the Sochas? No, because neither of them have money. They're just Ooh. both. They're just, uh, Isn't that the one where it's, you know, it's. It's New York City. They're just city kids. You get it? Yeah. They're just okay. city kids. So I don't think either of them uh, have money. Nice little comparison we got there. See, look at the stuff we do. We're talking about West Side Story. We're talking about The Outsider. I haven't seen it in a long time, but but yeah, that's West Side Story right there. I feel like that's a big part of the movie. There, there is, there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pizza, do it for Johnny. Do it for Johnny. The greasers. That that's the outsiders. Do it for Johnny, man. You gotta do it for Johnny. Do it for Johnny. Yeah, then right. he gets blasted. The cops blast them, don't they? Yeah, the, yeah. Well, that's the yeah the end. Sorry, hope I hope nobody, I hope nobody's seen it. And yes, Tom Cruise is in is in the movie Pete. And we talked about it the other day. Speaking of Tom Cruise, Tom my Cruise man, is fake at the beginning when he first comes in, right? So, but I, hey, Tom Cruise is setting the tone on the set of Mission Impossible Seven because. Uh, Man, if you heard, I think we talked about it, his rant the other day or his his outburst that he had on set. <laughs> Tom Cruise kind of really went off the uh, off the chain a little bit. Oh, uh, where he yelled at the people on the set? Yeah, he's nuts. I mean, I guess if I'm paying, listen, from what I heard is he's paying all the money to make that thing happen as far as, you know, what's going on facility wise and things like that. So I guess he, you know. If you do it again, the quote was like, if you do it again, you're effing gone. Like, I'm not messing with Tom Cruise. Judy flew a fighter jet, for God's sake. It's Maverick. He didn't fight. He didn't drop, fly any fighter jet. Yes, he did. He's just Maverick, a man. Simulator. Uh, you know. No way. You got to watch the trailers for the new movie. He's a certified pilot, man. He really does that stuff. Come on, man. This is Tom Cruise. Plus, if not, what is he, a Scientologist? You mess with him, like, you disappear. Nobody knows where you are the next day. Like, gone. Off the face of the earth, man. Those Scientologist people. I watched that thing on Netflix. Woo-hoo-hoo. Scientologist. That's not even a religion. It's a cult. Oh, we got somebody new here. Dexter Austin for Sleeper. Okay, welcome. Nice to see you. We have not seen uh, the name pop up before, so welcome. Yeah, true, true, true about this appearance. Well, All right, let's, let's get into football so we can kind of get you into the flow here because you're obviously not feeling good. I got to bring you the juice, so let's go. I'll take, I'll, take, I'll, take, I'll take it, but I'll bring you to another level. Let's get this going. Come on, let's talk football so we get you going. Well, I mean, well, you know, there's a couple things going on, man. Uh, first of all, number one in recruiting, again, is Alabama. Is anyone ever going to unseat Alabama? When Nick Saban leaves, I guess that's a I guess that's a good answer. Um, you guess. You tell me there, what else. Is there no one that can outcompete with Nick Saban? If you're a player coming out of high school, and your ultimate goal is to make it to the NFL, where else would you want to go? Alabama is the Amazon of football. They are meaning Amazon. what? Explain that. Meaning they basically control everything. The they, Walmart. I mean, it's the, the they are the are they top. Walmart or Target. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like Clemson is like Walmart. You know. Would you think Clemson is too? Um. I don't know what, what, what the recruiting rankings have it. I don't I'm just thinking right now, if you're thinking, if you're a five-star recruit, you're a big-time guy, what program automatically comes off your list? And, and to me, <laughs> Alabama Clemson should be on everybody's list. 
Top five were Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, LSU, Clemson. Give me, give me it again one more time. Alabama, Al- Ohio State, Georgia, LSU, Clemson. Bama? Bama? Ohio State, Georgia, LSU, of Clemson. Ohio State, Georgia, LSU. LSU is four? Yes. I think that LSU is four because they won a national championship last year. I think Georgia is the next Alabama in terms of recruiting. I mean, actually, let me put it this way. I think once Saban leaves, Clemson will move into that role. As long as Dabo is there, they will be one or two. Right. Ohio State, no matter what, <laughs> we've seen it happen. We've we've seen changes within the last couple of years, you know, going from I mean, you've just seen the change from 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 Trestle, right, to Fickle, who's now at Cincinnati, and look what he's doing there. Um to Urban, and right. now Day. If ultimately Day wants to ride into the sunset with Ohio State and just, you know, be a Nick Saban, I think he can do that. What I question is I know a lot of people are going to go after him in the NFL. And from what I've heard yesterday and on talk radio, there could be up to nine NFL jobs open. Wow. Yes. And I'll just tell you right now, after watching the Chargers and the Raiders last night, I know the Chargers pulled out the win. But that guy should be fired, who is it, Anthony Lynn, I believe, should be fired today based off of some of the things that I saw last night. The Chargers did everything possible to lose that game. They had no right winning that game in any way, shape, or form. They made some some, some coaching decisions that I just – I've never seen anything like it in my life. And they have – Herbert is – after watching him last night, if he continues this way, he will rival Mahomes. Him and Mahomes will go back and forth until they want to do no more. They are the new Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, but they can actually throw. <laughs> hmm. I'm t- I'm, if you watch this game, I, it was phenomenal. Patrick Wall says, give me a call. Well, he's talking to Pete. Uh Oh, that's nice. We got friends over. Here. Is this like a Yukon, like whatever? Is these are well, these Pat, all like yeah, are these all Huskies? Uh, no, not Dexter Austin for sleeper. And uh, the majority of these people are Huskies. Of course. Who, who, I mean, come uh, on, man. I got to change this up. I, I need. Obviously, I'm gonna have to get some Red Hawks on here so we can talk some real football. I know, don't do it. Don't don't do it. Don't say it. I don't want to hear it. Skip over it. Let's continue continue to go. Let, let let's go. So final rankings for yeah. recruiting Alabama, Ohio State. So you got SEC, Ohio State in the Big Ten, Georgia SEC, LSU SEC. And Clemson, ACC, I think Clemson could, if they were in the SEC, would rival a lot of teams and could play with anybody in the SEC. Um, I think that they have uh, not only the talent, but I I think the talent in the right spots to play in the SEC. And ultimately, I think that's the D-line. I think that's what separates the SEC from every other conference is the fact that, yeah, that hurt. That looked like it hurt. And – I think the SEC separates oh, itself from the other conferences because of the D linemen play. The D linemen are so athletic. Um, you're basically playing with a bunch of linebackers uh, in the SEC in the SEC as far as the D line is concerned. But that's my separation. But that's a tell you what, man. That, that that's a hell of a list and a, and a top five right there. Um, where's Notre Dame? Uh, good question. Eight. Who's six? Texas A&M? Oregon. There's something about Nike uniforms, brother. Texas A&M seven, Oklahoma nine, Florida ten. Kind of by the board, you know? Yeah, I mean, those are teams I think that if we said, hey, who do you think is the top ten? Who who do you think has the best top ten recruiting classes? Uh, I think that you and I would – that these are the names that we would say. Absolutely. Like I don't I don't see anyone in there that's like, oh, what are they doing there? You know? 
Um, I see Coastal Carolina moving up a little bit. I'll tell you that much. I definitely do. Are they in the top fifty? Uh, I would. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't. I'm not. I didn't look at any list. I'm going off of just basically what you said. Oh, uh, Coastal is not in the top fifty. Now here's the thing about Coastal. What I think will happen with them. Remember, this is just early signing day. Coastal's kind of just come on the map. Coastal's going to now get a lot of those guys that trip around and can still play ball. But I think now Coastal will move up on a lot of lists just because of what they've done. So anybody who's in limbo or maybe something, I mean, Coastal's going to start to get some 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 different type of dudes down there. I'll tell you that much. Plus, they're in the South. They are in the South. So they mm. have the ability to recruit that area. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Um, who's not to say they don't steal a guy from Clemson? Or – Hey, maybe maybe you know I'm 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 the backup at Clemson. I don't really like what I'm doing. How about I you know How about I head to Coastal? They're 86. They're I mean, if you, think about, if you think and if you think about it, this is what their first year. They're, this is their second year, first year playing F, FBS. They're still working with FCS roster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How great would it be to start an in-state rival rivalry game, Coastal Carolina Clemson? They got a long way to go before they get there. Or Coastal Carolina. How about this one? Here's one for you. Coastal Carolina, South Carolina. South Carolina ain't too good, so there's a good can opportunity. Coastal play with, can Coastal play with South Carolina? Right now, absolutely. absolutely. How big of a win would that be? Huge. You, you want to talk about recruiting. You know, you're talking about those are the three in-state big daddies. Obviously, Coastal's just been pretty much a doormat because they were FCS. Now, all of a sudden, they bump up to the big boys, get a big win on national television, and 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 look what happens. Absolutely. I mean, they're, and they're doing all this with a with a center who's five nine. <laughs> That's incredible. That's right. It's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting. interesting. He's like two ninety though, or three hundred. And I'm sure, Dave, I am sure he is the ultimate offensive lineman. And anybody who coaches knows exactly what I mean when I say he's probably an O-lineman, which means he's probably just a dog. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he, right. he's a dog. he goes whistle to whistle. He's one of those guys that's going to bite your face off. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just a, he's an offensive lineman. I guarantee you those off. I bet you on Thursday nights or whatever, those guys go out for wing night. They seem oh, like that type of group. You know, I love wing night. <laughs> well, I'm sure you did. <laughs> John Sally ate 110 wings. I think it was a wing night. Former Husky. Dexter Austin for sleeper says that it gets dirty in the trenches. Yeah, it does. And, and I've expressed it on this show. My coach right here, Coach Schumann, knows this is my philosophy that if you, if you don't win up front and if you don't have a bunch of dogs up front, you're not winning anything. I don't care how I don't care how good your skill guys are. I mean, they may be able to pull out one or two wins, but it, when it gets into playoff time and nitty gritty, and especially up here where it gets colder, um, I think your your lines are where you succeed or will have your most success. So mm. that's that, that's what I work with, and and to see Coastal doing that with the guys that they have is 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 phenomenal. It's awesome. It's really exciting. They they have made twenty twenty more exciting or, or more something um, <laughs> just because that's such a, a feel good story. I need you know? the cough button. You know how they have the cough button at like, um, yeah, I got it. Shows. We need some sound drops too on this thing. Like, you know? Yeah. We'll have to, we'll have to we, get that. Don't worry. It's only episode 14. We're going to work this out. Just watch pretty soon. You know, we're going to get some sponsors are going to want to talk to us. You know what I'm saying? We're going to move up. You know, I'm just saying, well, this is going to be big. Yeah. I just um, want a polo, I just want a polo that says, you know, football in the kitchen sink so I can wear it and be official. All right, we, can get, we, can get, we can get that taken care of quick. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, so those are your games pretty much for the weekend, guys. Um uh, let's see. What's the other one? Texas A&M is playing Tennessee. That should be an absolute blowout. You agree? Oh, Texas A&M, Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. The blowout. spread is four, the spread is fourteen. Definitely a blowout. The over is fifty-one and a half. I I, I see that hitting. 
Especially with Texas A&M right on that bubble trying to make a statement. I think they try and score 50. Yeah, they score a lot of points, so. Um, What else do we got? Uh, Washington State, Utah. Is that anything worth talking about? Probably not. Here's another underrated game going along. I mean, we always talk about Army, Navy, Army, Navy, but how about this one? Army's playing Air Force this weekend. And Army is actually the underdog. Really? Three and a half. What's Air Force's record? Uh, that is a great question. That's that's where you come in. Would do some fact checking for me. Let me stay here. I'm going to enter the broadcast studio here. So I'm going to shift from one area. Wow. So in this time where you are fact checking, I have to – Hold on. Sorry. Are you being abducted? (laughs) Did aliens just come down and they're about to just like bring you up? Like, what was that? Oh, sorry. A little feedback as I switched monitors. So, check this out. So, Florida, we have some viewers that want to talk Florida, Alabama. Um, so, while you're fact checking that, let, let me let me do this a little bit. Florida, Alabama. What do you think the spread is? A lot. Uh, yeah. 10. 15? 20? 17. Oof. Florida, underdog, 7. Oh! What do you think the over-under is? 60. Keep going. 70? 74 and a half. Ooh, I might take the under on that one. <laughs> just so everybody knows in case, you know, everybody always asks where you're getting your stuff. I use DraftKings. Uh, DraftKings is, is my go-to. I know there's a lot of other athletes or outlets um, that use things. But, yeah, that's the uh, – that's so. So on fan uh, on I'm sorry on DraftKings the spread for that game um, for Florida and Alabama, which is an eight o'clock kickoff, is 17 points, but the over uh, at 74 and a half. That's a lot of points, man. And I know both teams score points, but do people forget that Alabama, like you know, they still play defense? Alabama is great defense. I, 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 uh, oh, I mean, they're, they're, they're still going to – I mean, maybe they haven't been as dominant as they have been in the past. But I, I don't see – even to Florida, do, do you see Alabama giving up 28 points? No. Absolutely not. You know what's crazy? Um, on my diet, uh, <laughs> I have to eat every two and a half hours. What is uh, – if you don't mind, and, and if you don't mind, tell me. Like, I, I have to go grab uh, a snack. What? What is it? If you don't mind saying the name of the company that it's well, uh, uh, it's called Octavia, I think it's called. Dude, are you kidding me? This is what my dad has been on since April. He's lost fifty pounds. Is that Octavia? Yeah, hundred percent. So, so they sent you. So you you, you do yeah. your thing. It's all about drinking a ton of water, correct? Florida thirty five twenty eight. Dexter, you got to be smoking some. Hold on, oh, I'm dude, 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 I'm dude, Jack, my, my snack. Yeah, how, many, how many edibles went down, my friend? Are you serious, dude? 35, 28? You, you take control. Where you got to go eat? I'm grabbing a snack. Try the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Bars. They're banging. Jen, Dave's on Octavia. Looks like uh, looks like I know what I'm asking my parents for for Christmas. Yes, I'm 34 years old. My parents still give me Christmas gifts. Uh, looks like I'm going on the diet plan here because uh, I'm back, baby. there's no way there is no way I can let my head coach look better than me. Looks better than what? Me. I already do. So I'm a lot older. I got the uh, yeah yeah one of those pot like pop tips right cinnamon crunchy o's yeah they do. listen I'll tell you right now Jen 
because Jen and I have been going through this, right? So I keep yelling to my fiance because she's in the back over here. Um, my dad has literally did, and I, you can talk to him about it because he loves to talk about it because it's he's literally lost 50 pounds. looks amazing as compared to what it is just being on this diet. So his phone literally goes off every two hours. You got to have a snack. You got to do this. But the, the, the main thing, he was the most concerned with the amount of water that you have to con consume. I think it's what, 64 ounces? Um, half your body weight in ounces. Right. So he, uh, so he has to, that was his biggest concern, but after a while it was, it was like nothing. So dude, good for you. I'm about to, uh, all right. Now I know what I'm asking for, for Christmas. Who's his health coach? Your, your dad. Um, it's actually a girl, uh, a lady from up North that we know. Um, Lindsay is her name. And how much is Jen? You can, come on, come on. Come here, Jen. Oh, uh, Jen, Jen doesn't want to be seen cause she hasn't done her hair, but, um, uh, I didn't do mine either. Come on, Jen, come say hi. Yeah. Meet my meet my people. This is what I do. This is this is this is what we do. Dave's eating chips. Um so yeah, his health coach. How much did Lindsay lose? A hundred? She's at like 80 something in uh in I believe a year. I think it's about a year. She's uh, she's like 80, lost 80. And I think her like I think it's more the size of the things, you know what I mean? Like She's dropped pants sizes like I can, can't even imagine. I wonder. If and, her, about and that's the thing too. Like her husband and her did it, so it's kind of you know what I mean. Um, my dad's a big one for the pancakes. He loves the pancakes. I had the pancakes this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Is today is day one for you? Day one. Now, when you ordered your food, it came in like a monster box, right? And there's monster just monster box. Food. Yep, and it's just and everything's color coordinated, right? There's all kinds of colors. And I stuff. wonder. So your dad's health coach. I wonder because I'm guessing it's like some level of multi level thing, right? Um, I wonder if his his person is under my person or vice versa. Yeah, well, and I know it's a lot of uh, like I said, it's a lot of networking, so a lot of that stuff. And obviously, you know, she's more like, uh, you know, once she got into it, she decided, you know, hey, let me like do something with this, and like, so she sells it to the people and whatnot. And I'm sure she, you know, some does something, but um, like I said, she's also there to coach you basically and help you through the whole thing. Um, but my he God, loves it. Man. My God, I mean, he loves it. Well. and believe me, my father is one of the most picky, like the pickiest person ever when it comes to food, things like that. And, and, and now I see him, I see him eating things that I'm, I'm like, you would never eat that. You know what I mean? Like, he, you know, he's tried, what was that? Shrimp. Yeah. Like fish. Like he was never, he wouldn't even eat shrimp. You know what I'm saying? And now he's eating shrimp, tilapia. I mean, you know, avocados. Yeah. Like the guys eating avocado. I mean, it's just whatever he basically, yeah, he basically would never eat anything green unless it was a salad. So for him to do all of this, Every two hours, you know what I mean? That He has an alarm on his phone. It goes off, and, and he does what he does. He eats what he's supposed to eat. Um, did, how many of those little bars did you get? Those things are amazing. There's a bunch of them. But the uh, dude, is listen, you got to tell me what you got. I'll go through because, obviously, the way I look, my father's been pushing this on me. Like, hey, it's time for you to stop looking the way you look. Like, you played you safe. What are, you, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, he gets so many compliments about whatever. And, and to be all, in, in all honesty, he's tried every diet you could possibly think of. And he's he's a guy that, it, like, look, he could go from 250 to 220 in three weeks. That's just how it is. And it's so visible for him. He's one of those guys that, like, he starts losing weight and you see it immediately. So, I mean, his face is now a whole different, you know, whatever. I mean, he literally had to get a whole new wardrobe, uh, you know, so – for for lack of a better word, term, he's been talking a lot of shit to me, um, telling me it's about time. And this is all the best part about it. Obviously, is this is all with no exercise. Well, I'm exercising too, so. Well, I know that. So you're just going to you know do whatever. Um, we'll speed up the entire process, but good for you. And now That's I'm pissed hard, though, because now I'm pissed because now I have to think about is Popeye's chicken. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I have had uh, Chick Fil A three times this week, so so that's gonna be my hardest part. My hardest your part hardest part is going to be when you stop for gas, not going into this into the into the mini mart. Right, mini mart. Well, at the mini mart, although 
I love at Wawa. I'm a big fan of Wawa when you go in and they have the uh, toasted raviolis or the um, uh, the buffalo chicken bites. I come right out of ripped. I come right out of you know ripped training when I do my therapy. I go right into Wawa parking lot. I get myself some toasted raviolis, some buffalo <laughs> chicken bites. I would get myself. Um, uh, uh, hey, let me ask you this. So maybe an empanada. When you were at UConn, um, did they have a nutrition plan and food as part of your scholarship process, that whole thing? No, because not, now everybody you know, does, but uh, right. And you look into that stuff and you realize and, and the first time and, and you know the first time I saw it firsthand was was, was back um, when I visited the University of Florida uh, with a big time recruit, Sony Michelle from Heritage. Uh, he actually American Heritage Plantation down in Fort Lauderdale, who's playing in the in the uh, Florida State Finals tonight. So good luck to them um, in their game tonight. But we visited the University of Florida for their spring game, and uh, I got to see firsthand, you know, kind of the behind the scenes of a of a big time Division one program. Um, um, and the, uh, the, the the nutrition aspect was something that really took my breath away. I mean, these guys literally would, would you know, they come off the field after practice and each one of them had an individual, you know, shake ready to yep. go as you know, names on it, everything. And, uh, you know, the, the, the guy, uh, Jeff Dillman, actually, who is the, um, I believe he's now part of IMG. I believe he's the strength coach at IMG was the head strength coach at the university of Florida at the time. And he explained to me like each one of these guys has a very individualized plan. So if we have a guy that's coming in, that's looking to put on weight or we need him to put on weight, you know, here's the shake we make up for him. If we're looking for a guy to get cut up and lean up, here's his shake. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then obviously they have access to, to, to food, but here's the thing about it. It's not like, like they have choices, but, Every choice is the right choice, if that makes right. sense. So what's on display is there for a reason. You know what I mean? And then these guys, you know, they get used to eating that and 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 it changes everything. Um, I look at I look at my player and you saw him in 2017 when I was at Mount Olive, Liam Anderson, you know. That kid was 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 a skinny little rail, you know what I'm saying? He goes to Holy Cross, gets on a nutrition plan and all this kind of stuff, and he was, you know, he explains it to me. And the kid went from 180, and now you know he's he's two, he's all of 225, you know, and just did it the right way, you know, working out, and then the nutrition aspect, man. I mean, I think it's you look at some of these facilities, you know. I was talking to you yesterday about float therapy. And I looked at it today, and I, some of these Division One programs have have the float tanks right in their facility, where these guys go in there and, and do their thing. It's part of their recovery, you know, acupuncture. All, all there's so much that encompasses becoming a Division One football player than just running around making tackles or catching passes, you know. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, the nutrition aspect is. Um... It's always something that's interested me. It's just, you know, because of how your body, like the human body is a machine, you know, and I always, and I always compare it to, to like a car, you know what I mean? Like if you put bad oil into your car or bad gas into your car, is it going to run at its optimal premium top of the line? You know, is it going to act that way? Well, it's the same with your body, man. If you're putting bad gas or bad oil into your system, and, and in this regards, we're talking food, you're not going to perform as well. And the colleges that have really tapped into that, I think, have really taken their programs to a whole nother level. I think that's that's huge. I mean, then when you take it to the NFL, you look at these guys that have personal chefs, you know, everybody's got certain guys for certain things, you know, Um who was the outside linebacker for Pittsburgh? The monster, Jerome Dr Harrison. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I believe he spent something. He was talking like he spends almost, you know, you know, almost a hundred thousand dollars a year just on him. I know LeBron James <laughs> a ton of money on himself. Continue, you know, to to to, to recover, to eat right, to do the, you know, all of these things outside of football. 
itself that are so impactful. Um, and at the high school level, we do our best as far as what we can. You know, we're fortunate enough to have to deal with Gatorade where we can cakes and bars and some of that little kind of stuff. But I mean, well, if you're a high school, if you're a high school program and you have something like that in place, oh, or, yeah. you, or or at least at the least, I, I would urge every high school coach, you know, in that meeting, you know, in that first of the year meeting, to to stress these things. And if these guys have questions, please ask because you got to eat right, you got to sleep, you got to do the recovery stuff, and that's kind of things that we can't control just because of the level we're at. Um, but at least if you can get your kids to be accountable for that, I think that would take your program to a whole nother level. I agree. That was a good rant. I think that was a good rant on my part. Yeah. I mean, I think nutrition, I'm preaching. what happened? I said, I'm preaching. Pre preach, preach on brother, preach on. Um, you know, I'm saying it's, uh, that's just how, uh, you, you advance your program. Nutrition is, a key aspect to it. So, you know, it's, that's just, I mean, it's tough. I've been at programs where, you know, you got, you just, you got guys that don't even have, you know, that can't even, you know, that like, they don't even have, you know, lunch at school is all they're guaranteed to get for that day sometimes. Right. You know, and that's unfortunate because, because of that, does it take away from your athlete? playing well on the field. I mean, if I know a kid is having lunch in school, but I know he's not eating until lunch the next day, you know, what can I do to handle that? What can, how do I handle that? That's something that, you know, it's not brought up. When you think of being a coach, you don't think about making sure your kids eat, you know? No, you're right about that. Yeah, it's one of those, another one of those things that goes on the list that, you know, people don't know about, but it's so damn important. And to me, it just piques my interest. It really does. I, I love nutrition. I think it's amazing. Um, obviously, I don't follow anything that I read, <laughs> uh, but it, it to me, it does. It does warrant a lot of attention, and and you can see it now more so um, with your programs that, that that they do that. They they teach nutrition. Um, they teach you know recovery stuff, and not just from injuries. You know, taking care of your body on a regular basis, getting enough sleep. Um, all of those kind of things, taking time. I mean, you're looking at the yoga, right? I mean, meditation aspect, the, the mental, mental health awareness stuff, that stuff's all in my eyes, it's been there, but it's more so of a focal point now, especially in a year like this, you know what I mean? Where guys are dealing with things that they're not normally dealing with and unprecedented. And it's not like they can go to somebody and ask, how do I handle this? Because it's never been done, you know? So it, it's kind of like we're writing the book as it is. Just God forbid, if something like this ever happens again, here's how we got through the pandemic in 2020. Or this worked for me. Maybe it might not work for you, but this is what worked for me. At least give them something. Mm. I don't know. Maybe that's the next market we should hit on. We should write a book, Survival of tw uh, 20, uh, co 2020 Survival Guide. Well, uh, I don't. Well, you don't. You need twenty. You need pandemic survival guide. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Keep your distance. You know what's funny? I haven't had a cold at all the whole since before the pandemic. This is the first time I've even had a sniffle. So. <clears throat> it's kind of weird. I'm actually surprised by it a little bit. So, and here's the thing: this is this is to me this is the scariest part of this whole thing is that the sniffle used to be just a sniffle, right? Hey, I'm sick. I got a cold. It is what it is. But now it's like, hey, I got a sniffle. Oh shit! You're like panicking, like right. Uh, uh, hurry up! I need a test. Get, get, get it, You know, like uh, I would never even. Uh, I would never. Oh, if it's, if it, put it this way: if this was not a pandemic, I right would now, just be like, dude, I got a cold. Uh, I'll be okay in a couple of days. You know what I mean? Like, just fight it off, sleep it out. Day quill, night quill, little congestion, something, whatever, whatever. Like you wouldn't be concerned enough to like go to a doctor or anything like that, unless it got to another level. Yeah, but because of the times we're in, <laughs> it's like 
dude, do I need to go to a doctor and get tested right now? Right. Because you're worried about, is it going to progress or something? Right. And then it comes into, I mean, you got a wife. I mean, you got a family. You know what I'm saying? Like you got a son. Oh, what yeah. do you do? You locking yourself in the basement? I know you try and do that as much as possible anyway, but now it's, you know, do you have to put on the ET hazmat suit just to, to do whatever? I know, right? That's but hey, you were outside playing in the snow yesterday. Well, that's I, I mean, I I didn't feel I felt like something was coming on yesterday, and then I was out in the snow the, the whole morning. Well, you looked good, I'll give you that. I was interested. I, I, was I don't I don't really feel like I just feel like uh I don't know. Like I haven't gone out or anything, so it was just, very interesting though, your 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 choice of gloves. I had football gloves on. Yes, very interesting, my friend. They slide better when you go on the sled. Uh, I just did you look like uh you look like Clark Griswold going down the hill on the uh letter rip. <laughs> letter rip. No, I I guess I didn't, you know, so <laughs> you're a good uh, man. Yeah, I enjoy it. It was it fun. looked like Troy, it looked like Troy had fun and and you know what's absolutely crazy, and I was telling Jen this that there is not an inkling of snow on the island where I am. Oh, really? Like, uh, not even a, like, not even a snow flake. <coughs> like, nothing is covered in snow. And then I took a ride up north to Red Bank today, and I was it was like winter wonderland. Yep. Here, rain, wind, nothing. That that was it. Wow, that is crazy. Well, um, there was a lot that I wanted to talk about, but there's only, uh, but I forgot a lot of it. So uh, we, we, say, we, we talked about Coastal. We well, talked I, about some of the I game. About Auburn and their hiring situation. They haven't hired anybody. You're still, anybody. On You're still hired on anybody yet? No. So now and Kevin they, Steele, they were talking that they might hire. Let me see if Kevin. there's any. Uh, They might hire who? Um, let's see. Auburn head coach shirt has a leading candidate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's the here's the story. This this is what make doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So Auburn has a, a head a coach leading candidate. Their leading candidate is Kevin Steele. Okay, who's the interim head coach. He's their deep current defense. Now, what? Now, Kevin Steele has worked at big time programs. He worked with Saban at Alabama. I believe he worked at LSU for a time period. So he, he does have some. Baylor. He was what? The head coach of Baylor. The head coach of Baylor when? Before Bryles? He didn't win many games. I know that. Okay. Well, that's then, so, so you know he knows that. So, if nothing else, you know he knows that world. He was the DC at, um, he was Auburn's DC this whole time. So, uh, okay. I mean, look, here's, here's his head coaching record. I guess it's before, um, I guess well, it was first off, before you do that, let me just say. So you're talking a defensive guy now becoming a head coach, which is kind of bucking the trend recently, correct? Yeah. A so, lot of these guys are, are going with younger, high energy, exciting offenses. Let's put points on the board. And look, you can say I'm going to lean one way or another because I'm a defensive coordinator and tab the defensive guy. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think that was a good bless you. I'm not sure what that was, but as long as you don't go down, okay. Um, my whole philosophy is always if they don't score, we win the game. Uh, 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 what? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, he goes, uh, what? Like, yeah, they, well, you thank, don't you, want thank you. You definitely don't want to so, score. His record at Baylor was 1 and 10, 2 and 9, 3 and 8, 3 and 9. I guess then he got canned. This is 99, 2000, 2000. He hasn't been a head coach. Has it like 1999? Yeah, 20, 20, 18 years. Was, 19 years ago was the last time he was a head coach. I was playing fullback 
and killing it in seventh grade back in 99, just so you know. I was uh, 1999. I was working in New York City for Channel Communications. And um, and your paychecks were huge. They were pretty huge, and it was – it was a it was a different time. It was during the dot com boom. The first dot com boom, I should say. I was in eighth grade reading books like Monster and um oh, what was the other book we and then we got into high school and we're talking about the things they carried. Lord of the Flies. The Odyssey, The Outsiders, um, To Kill a Mockingbird. I'm such an academic. The Canterbury Tales. Mm. What are you looking at? Because you're focused. I was just reading the, the over thing. <laughs> okay, so, so the leading candidate is a guy in-house, on staff, defensive guy. He looks like the guy to get the job. What pushes him... If they're looking to make a change, why do you stay in house? That's what everybody's question is. So they thought they so they thought that they were going to get Mario Cristobal, I guess. And he just signed a new deal with Oregon to stay up there. Do you know who his offensive coordinator is? Mario Cristobal. It has to be Moorhead from uh, Joe Moorhead. Do you know where he got his start? Well, he was the head coach of Fordham. I know that. Fordham to where? To uh, you, uh, I don't know if he went to UConn, then Fordham, or Fordham, then UConn. I can't remember. It must be. No, he was the head coach of Penn State after Fordham. He was not the head coach of Penn State. He was a. Oh, you're right. He was the offense coordinator. Offensive coordinator. Then from there, he got. Then he went to Fordham? No, he was at Fordham before. He left Fordham to be an OC. At the Division One level. Right. So he was the OC at UConn, left UConn to go be Fordham's head coach, left Fordham. To be the OC at Penn State. Penn State, he got the Ole Miss job. Right. And now and now that didn't work out. And then he's now yeah. got it. He's a very good offense coordinator, so. Just to be at Oregon, man. Good guy. Just good guy. Be able to walk down the street to Nike and be like, what do you guys got? <laughs> 2012, the uh, Pow Park Tigers went into Fordham Stadium and won the 7-on-7 seven seven championship over Red uh, over, over uh, Bergen Catholic in I remember that. five overtimes. I remember that. Now, the thing and about Fordham, right? Fordham, great FCS school. Very good academics, correct? Very good academics. But from what I've heard is do not step off campus. Well, <clears throat> I've been to Fordham many a times. No, and it's where? Why. Where in New York? I won't disclose why, but I've been to Fordham is it, many is it, the, is it the Bronx? Uh, yes. Now, Gatorade Player of the Year – Quarterback, 1994, Butler High School, Dan Medine. Okay. Fordham. Was Fordham any good back then? I don't think so. Also, when I was in high school, DePaul Catholic quarterback, Matt Fulham, Fordham. The... This is before your time, but Hi, oh, yeah. oh, and I got a great trivia. I got a great West, trivia uh, Westwood's head coach, Joe Gambadella. I know the name. Was the defensive coordinator at Fordham in the nineties, early nineties, and recruited. And then he me. went and took Westwood into like winning everything. Well, they they weren't good, and I guess they ended up getting let go, and that's when he went to high school. But he. Um, he recruited me. He used to call my house all the time. He was a great guy. He was my favorite. He was my favorite recruiter. Um, and what's so, funny so he was at Westwood when they had BJ Raji.
I'm not sure. Westwood's Westwood. Had a lot of- they have a 2000, lot of- 2004 season, Westwood defeats Butler High School in the state finals. Uh, Butler's second loss in a row in the finals um, to win another title for Westwood. That was Joe Gambadella. Yes. And I believe BJ Raji was on that team. Then Joe Gambadella might have stepped down right after that or the, or the next year. And then um, the guy who used to coach a fight, I think he's back at Fort Lee. Uh, his his uh, the guy under him took over. I can't think of his name. I can't believe I forgot his name. Um, he took over. I think he won one state championship two the next year, and then uh, then went to Fort Lee. I don't know why. I can't remember why. But there was a reason. But uh, yeah, so Joe used to recruit me, and he used to always say to me, "It was great." He'd be like. Uh, um, when I saw him, when I was coaching high school, he goes, yeah, I just call your house all the time. He's like, he's like, uh, you didn't have the heart to tell me you had no interest in Fordham. <laughs> Actually, I did like Fordham because of him, but I just couldn't see myself going to school. Well, when you, when you develop those relationships with certain coaches, like, like, do you know how difficult it was for me to call Scott Van Zyl? A, a Butler alum, somebody who I had a very personal relationship, and, and tell him that ultimately, like, look, I'm sorry, I'm not coming to Monmouth, but I'm actually going to a rival school in the conference in Sacred Heart. Like, that might have been one of the hardest phone calls I ever had to make. But I needed to be a mature man at that time, even though I was a high school kid, and make that phone call. And I think some of these kids now – they shoot a text message like, Hey, I'm not going to do that. Like you understand that this guy recruited you for a reason and put, put time and effort and, you know, Oh, time away from his family to talk to you on the phone to try and get you to come to a school. You know what I mean? Like at least give some respect. Um, and I think that's what we, we kind of preach that as coaches. I think we've been very fortunate in our two years at Red Bank that we've had good kids, you know, um, I think it's a place where ki- the, the kids are good and they understand that aspect of it. They're respectful, you know? Uh, and I think that's one of the things we preach because it's not that, that, you know, that takes that, that goes further than, than football and it and takes you after football, you know? So I think that's part of creating good men on our part. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have to conduct yourself the right way. I think that's a key part to the recruiting process. Um, I'm spent. Damn. I know you're not an hour now or you're going, but I'm spent. There's a lot going on. Got to get some shirts out for the NUC all American game. So those of you attending, they look very nice this year. They do. I've seen them guys. They look good. And, uh, I got out all the, uh, the Boardwalk Beasts try out um, the guys who are invited. I sent it out. I mean, to the team. We'll have another awesome. team in January. I'm excited. Those guys deserve it. They really uh, they came to play the other day, man. And it was good to see a bunch of kids running around and enjoying <laughs> what they're doing and, and, and stuff like that. Um, wow. I'll, 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 I'll tell you that offline. All right. Um, but uh, is there anything else you want to cover? Because I'm shot. <laughs> See how one more, I- one more thing. Because this, this holds is as close to my heart. And we were kind of talking about it the other day, right? University of Hawaii. What about it? Where do they play their games? The Aloha Bowl. The Aloha Bowl has been deemed unsafe and will be condemned. Oh, man. I used to run my events there. So listen. Here's the deal. You're going to buy it? In order in order to be a Division I program, you have to have a stadium with a capacity of at least 15,000. Is that what it is? I thought it was 32 or something. Okay. There <laughs> is... No place in Hawaii. There's nothing in Hawaii that can hold anything close to that. 
Now they have another project in place for a new stadium and a new athletic facility, but this is not supposed to be completed till 2023. Oh man, they're in a bind. So wow, that's amazing. They, they are now looking for a waiver that would allow them to play at the next biggest stadium, St. Louis in, High School, in Hawaii. Which St. Louis High School? I want you to know it is not St. Louis High School. Okay. I would like you to guess the capacity of the place oh. that they are going to possibly play. It has to be small. I would say uh, six thousand. Very close, my friend. 5,000. Ah, uh, what high school? Ah, uh, you're going to make – now I'm going to look it up. Um, but when I read that article, I, I got all jacked up because obviously – I think it's – you know what? I, I think it's on Football Scoop. It definitely wow. is. It's on, I read it on Football Scoop and it said, you know, hey, Hawaii looking for – you know, Hawaii basically no place to freaking play – uh, here, Hawaii. Hawaii has a stadium crisis on their hands. Um, oh, Steve Sarkeesian reported to interview for Auburn job. Of course he is. Why wouldn't he? That's a huge development. Wow. Now here's all. And I look, and I know you got. I know you're not feeling well. I know you want to go, but I, I have to bring this no, up. No, no, I'm good. When you when you do something like that and you're a coordinator of a team that's as successful as Alabama, and you know you're going to continue to be playing, <coughs> what do you do? Do And if you get that job, do you say, hey, look, sorry, I got to go focus on my program at Auburn? Or do you respectfully ride the wave and continue to do what you do with your current team? I'm asking you personally, how would you handle that? Say that again. Without the outside door, because obviously maybe there's a contract that says you have to finish it out or something of that nature. None of that being said, what do you do? Do you leave and go to your new program? Or do you stay, finish what you started, and then get out? With Alabama? If you okay, if you're Steve Sarkeesian, you get hired at Auburn. What yeah. do you do? Do you leave and go to Auburn? Do you stay as the offensive coordinator, win a national championship, and then go? What do you do? Oh, 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 oh if you get hired. If um, he gets hired. I think. It definitely puts you in a bind. Well, they may not let you stay, first of all. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. That stuff, like, like you know. I'll ask our viewers, Pete. What, Pete, what do you think? Dexter Austin for sleeper. What do you think? Uh, Patrick Walsh. What do you think? If you're Steve Sarkeesian, you're the offensive coordinator at Alabama. You're the number one team in the country. You're about to play Florida in the SEC championship game. You now interview and get hired at Auburn. Okay. What do you do? They may tell you, look, you have to come now. Right, that may be in a contract or something like that. But all of that aside, if you personally get to make the decision, what do you? Well, do? I'd like to coach the team, but and I don't know if I'd be allowed to. Pete stay. says Saban should send him on his way. Well, most people will because so you feel like most people are going to say, "Look, you just left us. See you later." Yes, and Saban always does that. Is it? In good faith, or is it? I think you offer it up and then leave it up. Leave it up to the head coach. Or are you pissed off? No, you're not pissed off. Are you happy? Are you happy that he leaves? Are you happy? Not, not that he's leaving, but as a head coach, are you? I don't. I don't know how to look at like. Are you? Happy is not the right word, right? Are, are you excited that your guys are progressing and moving ahead in their careers and you obviously have had something to do with that? Or is it like, bro, you're kind of screwing me over here? Um, I think it's probably – I don't think he's screwing you over on purpose. I, I think it's both. I think uh, – No, I'm not saying it's anything personal against Saban. It's just – a guy looking to progress his career. And my thing is, 
are you a fan of that? Do you support that? Do you yeah, do you like the fact that your assistant coaches are moving ahead and doing great things? Um, or is it like, look, dude, I gave you this opportunity when nobody else would even touch you with the no, issues. No, I don't think there. it's that at all. I, I think it's I think it's the the earlier. Uh, you're glad that they they have a chance to move on. You know. Do you allow them to finish the season with you? And then go, or do you say pack your shit? Or do you do you say pack your shit and get to Auburn? I don't think they say it that way, but I I, I think the coach wants to say it, but not do they say it, but not say it? Oh, I tried to rent this facility for an event once. Will you focus for five seconds? Like I'm trying. This is a uh, uh, this is a big thing. I'm trying to get to you. Like, come on, I man. Think, I think you send them on his way. I think you send them on his way, and you say thank you, and you know, best of luck. And that's just kind of how it is. You know, it's. Uh, and do you think now? Now is that is that programs all over, or do you think that's just a Nick Saban thing? Because obviously, we've seen Nick Saban staff turnover. Crazy, and we see guys on his staff doing things, big things, getting jobs all over the country. I think you, I, I think you you're doing a disservice. I think um, you, what's his I, name at Tennessee is there Kirby Smart? I mean, all I, I think you're doing a disservice. I think you're doing a disservice to the current program if you stay. The current program is in, for example, Sarkeesian is doing a disservice to Alabama if he stays. Yeah, because, um, like, the theory is, oh, okay, he stays, you can win a national championship, but is this hard in it? Or is he burning the candle at both ends? Is he sitting there working on the game plan for Florida, getting all his stuff done, doing what he has to do, and then calling recruits for Auburn at night? Yeah, I don't know. Or, or is he talking to a guy that has a fifth year, um, and then he's talking to the third and fourth stringer, saying, "Look, you're never going to play here. Why don't you come for me at, at, at Auburn?" <laughs> he goes, "He better not try to get coaches from the current staff." Yes, Dave, watch that. That was a great special. I don't know if you saw it. That was phenomenal. It was I did. I don't remember it though. Him talking back. I think. I think he got a. He got to let him go. Look, let, let's say Sarkeesian goes to Auburn. You 100% have to let him go. He's, he's, gonna take your recruit. he's recruiting against you. He's going to take your third string guys or your guys that could possibly be graduate transfers, correct? Uh, maybe. I mean. Pete said, look at Edsel leaving to Maryland. Please don't ever refer to Edsel on this program. Why? Ever. Well, the guy wouldn't even play this season. I'm not talking about him. Well, why? You just hate on UConn. Because you went to Montclair State. No offense. I love UConn. I would go there. I'd be a Husky. I'd be probably the, I would probably be now the truth player. comes out. Now the I would be the best player to ever come out of UConn. Like, I mean, like, you know, don't tell me. I mean, I'd you play my I you have to get on the field first. First off, all I have to do is <laughs> Listen, and this is for everybody. I'm out of it, but I'm not dead. For all of these guys that think guys can't, guys like me couldn't make it at a big level. First day of practice, you go out there, you find the best player, and you run into him as hard as you can and knock him on his ass. And I guarantee you, some, there's two things that are going to happen. One, you're going to get yelled at, and somebody's going to be like, what the hell are you doing? That's our best player. Why would you ever do that? But I'll tell you what, now you're on the coach's radar. Whether it's good or bad, they know who you are. Second, there's going to be a bunch of guys on the team that respect you and say, who the hell is this kid, and where is he coming off flying around like this doing these things either way people are going to start to notice who you are i don't care if i got a number 109 on my jersey and i had to wear my own cleats but i'm telling you right now i'm making a statement on day one so let me give you a little news flash here we go let me give you a news flash every player that's at big time schools comes in trying to do that no they don't no they don't everybody tries to make an impact immediately yeah, they're so much. scared to run out there on scout team. They would shit you're, their you're, you're, you're giving me some sacred heart nonsense. 
Yeah, why do you mean nonsense? You're damn right. They're like, hey, who needs – we need a punt returner. Somebody go out there on scout punt. Yeah, hell yeah, I ran out there and caught the friggin' punt. I may have got lit up like a kite and killed by the bunch of starters, but I sure as hell was running out there. They're like, hey, we need an extra D lineman on scout. Yep, I was That's running out there with a D lineman. Nope, but at least the coaches had to throw me off the field. They knew I was willing to get on there. That's what it's all about, man. You can't coach effort and you can't coach desire to do whatever. So sometimes just, you just got to be a question. Does Sacred Heart have a stadium? Absolutely. You should see it. Check it out. Google it right now. Bro, Bobby Valentine is the athletic director. Bobby Valentine. New York Mets, thrown out of a game, comes back on the game, sitting in the dugout with a mustache and glasses. You're telling me a guy like that can't lead a program? Check out the new facility. Their one end zone now is phenomenal. The other end zone, touchdown. They got a touchdown Jesus and a Jumbotron. It's phenomenal. I know this might cost our kids ever getting recruited by Sacred Heart, but I think Sacred Heart would be a team that we, I would be drinking Gatorade at halftime. And just talk well, to my friend. obviously, yes, but Sacred Heart, when I was gone, they won. I don't, know. I don't know. They won a mid major national championship the year before I got there. And yeah, they played in the NEC, which was kind of that, you know, they were with Monmouth and Robert Morris, and Albany was in the conference at the time, like that. Well, I played against some beasts. I played against Miles Austin. I mean, you know, there's some dudes. It's not like they can't play. What's a mid major national championship? It, it, what was that? What's a mid-major national championship? Explain that. A non-scholarship Division One AA national championship. See, Pete's got an account with the rugby team. Beautiful thing. Don't, then Pete, you got you got to make sure you 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 don't hate on them. I like their website. I want to see what their I want to see what their stadium looks like. Sacred Heart, Sacred Heart is your moment in the sun. You got someone backing you right here. Give them a job. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, uh. it's better than Mammoth. I uh, the the stadium. Now the stadium itself, not no. so. Much. The stands Mammoth. really aren't anything. You know, it's not like it's got a nice stadium. I like their stadium. I like the way they do it. Now look. I'm no, also, uh, you, you know, you got to understand, like, David. Uh, I mean, look, it's look like at where I. Capacity at Sacred Heart is thirty three hundred. It's not big. That's small. That's I can't really get a Listen, good view. The school only opened in the seventies. It's still such a young school. They in just the time, in, in just the time I left, right in two thousand four, two thousand five is when I left. The the the, uh, the enrollment and everything is just it's phenomenal. They got a nice video board. And the other – and check out the other end zone. That's brand new athletic facility. I mean, I believe they have a 60-foot rock climbing wall in there with a bowling alley, Bobby all kinds Valentine of – Valentine still works there, huh? He's the athletic director, man, and, and he's awesome. And the thing about them that that's great – and look, I, I am pumping the hell out of them because it was the best year of my life, hands down. Had personal situations, not had me leave. I'd probably still be there. Because I would have played, I would have GA'd, and I would have just continued to coach because the head coach up there, Coach Nofrey, absolute phenomenal man in general. Um, he, was the, he was the linebackers coach when I was there. He's pretty much the only holdover from, from the staff when I was there. But I look at the staff that I co that I played under, and, and, and you laugh all the time because it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy to follow these guys. You know? I mean – Neil Brown, the head coach of West Virginia, was my coach at Sacred Heart. You know, um, he's our coordinator. He was the yes, he was the OC, and then Artie Assalta, who's now the tight ends coach at Fordham. He was he was another guy that was that was there with me, um, and the offensive line coach Frank Joffrey is now the offensive coordinator with your boys at UConn. After spending some time, uh, he was at Maine for a while, and then um, he had GA'd at the University of Miami, so he had connections. Um, and when, um, damn it, it's escaping my name. Who who was the who was the coach that went to? Oh, Pagano. When Chuck Pagano went to Indianapolis, my coach Frank Joffrey went went with him, um, and he was his quality control guy for for the entire stint that he was there. 
So you're talking about three coaches that are, I mean, one, a head coach at West Virginia. Are you kidding me? And they came from small, like you said, 3,300 capacity. <laughs> to take part. Like great place to be, man. Great place to be. I'm looking at um, their recruiting areas, their coaches. and Well, they, they do like Jersey. Yeah, how come they don't have a mammoth on? Well, Mammoth's not in their conference anymore. They're still in the no, Northeastern. I'm saying Mammoth County is. Oh, oh. Um, their defensive coordinator, I believe, Cook. He is yeah. phenomenal. He's he's excellent. His his defense is 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 very good. What year did he graduate? They have great sports, man. Um, I know the girls' basketball team was in the NCAA tournament because they're Division One basketball. That was fun, man. Though those used to be some fun games. That was where I actually got to be a. Uh, the first time I got to be, I felt like a true student athlete. You know, the Cameron Crazies. I, I got to do that at Sacred Heart. I thought it was awesome. I had so much fun cheering on those guys. And and another great thing was, I used to watch our coaches in the off season. Um, when the girls basketball team would practice for a scout team, it would be five of our coaches and GAs that would go out there and play against the girls as, as, as like a, as like a way to, to kind of up the training and, and, and change the level a little bit. I mean, it was, it was a freaking awesome place, man. Like no I said, had my, cousin, had my cousin not got sick and I made the decision to come home, dude, that Connecticut would have been my home. I probably would have never left. I'm telling you right now, life would be totally different. I wouldn't know who the hell you are. You know, you'd have been screwed because you wouldn't have a guy like me on staff. That's amazing. I mean, it's just what it is. Oh. I don't think you need all these coaches. I think you should just hire me to be your life coach. I got you. No. What do you mean? Oh, how could you say? I got, I got my team around me. I got to put my team around me. I'll tell you who was unhappy yesterday. Coach McDougal sent me a picture and was very, very unhappy with the fact that he had the shovel and snowblow and asked me if I could go help. <laughs> Did he really? I think it was more like messing around because I always tell him because he's got a big yard and you know how I love yard work. Like you put on a backpack blower and blow leaves. You know I love right. that stuff. Therapeutic. Right. He was like, right. dude, if and he found it too. He started laughing. He's like, bro, you were so right. I love blowing leaves. It's amazing how therapeutic it is. I said, I know. So anytime you're doing it, come on, let me know. I don't have grass here. What am I supposed to? I mean, I can go walk out on the beach, man. But I mean, I, I can't blow leaves or cut a lawn. Mm. I'd be Forrest Gump, man. I'd cut that grass for free. Sounds good. Oh my God! Just get off. Just get just. <laughs> you're, so, you're so done. You know, disrespectful. You know, it is what it is. I mean, you guys have a great day. Yep, appreciate all of you. Thank you, Pete. Give me a call because it seems like you want to keep talking. So have a good night, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, yeah, feel better. Will you feel better, please? Well, hopefully in two days I will. And watch some football tonight. We got Oregon, USC. I guarantee you Oregon's wearing some kind of crazy uniforms. I got shirts to do. I'll call you if I get two going. If you need help, let me know. I'm your guy. It's not guy. hard. It's not rocket science. Well, I mean, if you can handle it, I think I can handle it. Well. Oh, here we go. I have an MBA. All right. You went to Montclair State. Yada, yada, yada. All right, bro. Let's, let's, I, got it. I didn't say okay. that. You said that. Just no, now. I know. I just know. Your I know. Your insecurity just prayed into you right there. <laughs> here we go. You know, at this point, you need to go have another snack because your blood uh, sugar is getting low. I can't low. have another snack. snack. That's the problem. I can't oh, have a snack until and Saturday. Listen, I'll tell you another thing that's very good. The mashed potatoes. I don't have mashed potatoes. Oh, you got to order them, dude. I'm telling you, they're phenomenal. Uh, I will actually go because I'll see my father tomorrow, um, and, and I'll be by their place. So I will check out the uh, – I will check out what he has and what he suggests for you. And if you want to talk to him about it, you know, go for it. But I'm telling you right now, like, you totally screwed me because now I'm going to be eating Octavia bars and all kinds of shit. Oh, here we go. The road, the road to 180 starts now. 291. What does that even set mean? 
What is your grade? What are your grade? 291. That was your weight. Oh, yes. Why is he telling me that four times? Because he's pumping you up. He's saying 291, 291, 291. Like, can you focus a little bit? Like, people are in your yeah, corner I, here. I, I get it done, man. Pete, remember the, last, remember the last time I had to get it done? I showed up with abs in Cancun ready to roll. <laughs> if he tells me one more story about traveling and – I just know the story he can't tell on the air. Mexico. Oh my God. Mm, 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 mm. I know you listen, you're from Saddlebrook. I know you were a fist pumper, and I know you used to gel your hair with a little flippy in the front. I just know it. I, I absolutely you were one of these guys. Mm, 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 Heck yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm sure you have no rhythm because you look like you have I no have hip. great rhythm. You have no hips whatsoever. That's why you freak. never ran hurdles. I'm a freak. Ask no, anybody. Pete Great says Cancun. Oh, Pete says we should go Cancun two years. Make it no, up. He, he went to Cancun two years. But I went. Here's my, listen, I, went. I will tell you one thing because I do have a goal. Pat Tillman every year does a 5K run for his Pat Tillman Foundation. It's on April 21st. It's a virtual run. If we're really going to do that, I would like to have a goal like that in, in, in line, like be able to run a 5K by April 21st. Yeah, yeah, Pete, I went there I went there five times to Cancun or four. Yeah, I wonder why. What one, was the part? One, two, three, one, two, three. Hey, can you can you can you see times. this? Four times. Hang on. Can you can you see this? I just want to show you. So this is my boy from Florida. At Florida State, this oh, is the uh, field. This is this is the state championship ready to go. Florida does it right, brother. And here, I'll give you something else that he's. Con- I'll tell you what he's concerned about. What do you think game time temperature is in Tallahassee? Seventy five, eighty. Forty two. Oh, wow. He is concerned because he doesn't let his running backs wear sleeves. Why would he not do that? Why does he not allow that? Think about it. Fumbling. Yep. So he's like, damn, my guys are going to be freezing. (laughs) Yo, 42 in Florida is no joke. On that note, you guys have a great day. I just want everybody to know I carried the show today because my co-host is a little under the weather. I'm not blaming him for it. I want him to get better and feel better. Um, But I just want you to know today was my day. So everybody have a great evening. Enjoy your weekend. Please watch some football. There's a lot of great games on. Um, Let's hope for the Giants to win, even though I'm not a Giants fan. And let's pray that the Jets keep losing so we can get Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Amen. Later.